Hello, traders. This is Jason with MotivWave. Welcome to the webinar on charting with MotivWave. This webinar is a continuation from the previous webinar named Getting Started with MotivWave. We will go into a little bit more detail in this presentation, though. Uh, the topics we'll cover today are console and desktops, chart linking, chart and bar themes, chart settings, components, title analysis and visibility, chart scaling and spacing, and replay mode. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to attend. Today's presentation will be approximately 30 to 40 minutes, and there will be a Q&A section at the end of the presentation. Uh, there should be a Q&A button at the bottom of Zoom where you'll be able to type in your questions. Last webinar, we got cut off a little early, so this time we'll leave a little more time for your questions. The webinar recording will be posted to the video tutorials section on our website. And if you're watching this webinar on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. Before we get into the content, I'm just going to go over a quick disclaimer. There is substantial risk of loss in trading commodity futures, options, stocks, equities, indices, cryptocurrencies, and foreign exchange products. Futures and options trading has large potential reward, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of these risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the markets. And please don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. So we've also posted CFTC rule 4.41 for you to read. And just wanna let you know that MotiveWave has a 14 day risk-free trial and you can sign up at motivewave.com. All right, so let's jump into it. So as mentioned in the previous webinar, getting started with MotiveWave, there are two types of layouts for charts. We have the docking framework here and then we have the floating layout as seen on the floating page. So the docking framework allows you to arrange charts within the console window. Uh, you're also able to pop out this chart window right here into a separate window by clicking the open chart window button in the top right corner. So that is this button right here. You can do that. And then you're able to place this uh, window anywhere you like, including other monitors. Now, if you're on the professional or ultimate edition of MotiveWave, you can create a new console-like window, and we call these desktops. They act just like the main console window, uh, and in order to create one, you can just go to File, New, New Desktop, and then you have to give it a name. So we're just going to call this one Left Monitor, and we click OK. And now, now we have another, uh, essentially another desktop or another console that you can throw on any other window you like. Um, one thing you'll notice though, is that the main console window is the only window that has the configure menu. Um, so that's just something to note that if you don't see it in a window, that means you're not in the console. Um, also, if, if you have many different windows open and you can't find one of the windows you're looking for, simply go over to the window uh, menu here, and then you can see the open windows. And right now we could select the left monitor desktop that we have, and it will bring it to the front. So I'm just gonna quickly touch on chart linking. Uh, we went over this before, but if we want to uh, link charts together, we can use link colors as shown before in the top toolbar. So I could link this chart right here, this Apple chart under the red link. And I could link this Microsoft chart under the red link. And I could go down and select any instrument in my watch list. So let's select Amazon. And now we can see both the charts are linked to Amazon. So if you want to remove a link, you can just click no group, select the chart and then select no group. So uh, one common question we get is how come when I switch one chart tab, the other chart tab next to it switches? Uh, this is a feature called linked stack charts. And this will happen when you have multiple charts that are next to each other as shown here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you, we're on the Amazon tab right here. If I switch over to the Starbucks uh, chart tab, what you're gonna see is this chart right here is gonna switch from Amazon to Intel. So I'm just gonna do that now and you'll see that switch. If I go back to Amazon over here on the far left chart, 
uh, this chart right here is going to switch to Amazon. So we can do that now. Um, so that is called the uh, link stack charts feature. And if you don't want that feature, uh, you can disable in the configure preferences, general, general tab under linked stack charts. So you can uncheck that. And now when we switch between Amazon and Starbucks, it does not change these charts right here. And another useful charting function is the lock scroll feature. So this can be enabled in the top toolbar, uh, this button right here next to the auto scale, it's called lock scroll. And you can enable it from the view lock scroll menu right there. And what this will do is this will allow you to uh, pan back in your chart and the other charts will follow along. So this might be useful for you know, different instruments or different time frames. So chart and bar themes, uh, we can set that in the configure preferences menu under theme. And then we have bar themes and chart themes, and you can create custom bar themes. So that would be for the bar colors and chart for the, the chart background, the price axis and everything like that. And if we want to create a new one, all we have to do is click this plus icon right here. Um, one thing to note is that you need to either select the light theme or the dark theme uh, from this drop down right here. A light bar theme will not show up in a dark theme workspace and vice versa. And on the theme tab, uh, we can set our chart theme. So we could do a tan if we wanted. We could set our bar theme to red or green or any custom bar theme that you had created. The buy sell colors, uh, this will just be the colors that are shown in the watch list. So it's just the blue and the red. It'll also show in your, your DOM, your trade panels and, and those types of things. So you could set that to red, green if you like. And the table row colors. So this will just uh, adjust the colors in the table rows. So that would be table rows or anything like a DOM or a watch list. That'll be this gray background color here. So you can uncheck use default and you can set those colors uh, to any color you like. The active chart station color. Uh, this, is, this is used to change this blue color right here. So it's the active chart and you can change that to any color you like. And then the active station color is just any other station that isn't a chart. So that would be a watch list, you know, an account panel and something like that. All right, so let's move on to the chart settings. Okay, so let's look at some uh, important settings and or possibly confusing chart settings. We're not gonna go through all of them. Uh, so you can find all these settings in the con configure preferences menu, and you can also find chart settings by double clicking the chart background, which will bring up the individual chart settings. And these individual chart settings will override the global preferences. So that would be the configure preferences menu. Uh, but for now, let's just head over to the configure preferences chart menu and take a look. Let's start out with the bar thickness. So the bar thickness is the width in pixels of each open, high, low, close bar or candlestick wick. So you can change that here. The time method, this could be confusing. So this is used to configure the display format for time-based components. So actually let me go throw a time-based component on the chart right now. Let's use, uh, I don't know. Let's use a time range component. And we'll go back to the configure preferences menu here. So trading time. So trading time will show the total trading time for that period. So in this case, we have 16 bars and it will multiply 16 bars by 15 minutes. And that's gonna give us four hours. So the trading time doesn't account for overnights or weekends. It's just the actual time spent trading on your chart. Now, if I switch this to elapsed time and applied that, you'll see it'll change. So elapsed time will now display the elapsed time uh, with days, and you can consider this like real time. So this might be something you would be interested in changing. And below that, we have 
right in this section, we just have a set of key modifiers that can be changed. So for example, shift plus click on your chart could enter text, or you could set it to enter a horizontal line or an annotation. The max linear bars will just limit the number of linear bars on your chart. So linear bars would be one minute, five minute, 10 minute, et cetera. And right below that, we have the max nonlinear bars. So any nonlinear bar would be at range, ranko, tick, volume, et cetera. The max stays, we talked about this before in the previous webinar. Uh, so this will just limit uh, any chart with tick data to 10 days by default, and this can be increased. Uh, and we do this to reduce the chart loading time. So a tick chart could be, it could be a linear bar, but you could be using something like the volume imprint study on that uh, that's using tick data and it will, it will limit that as well. So one question we see fairly often is why can't I see tick or volume charts? And one answer to that would be uh, your connection API needs to support historical tick data and not all of the connections support historical tick data. If, you, if you're wondering if yours does, just email support at modalwave.com and we'll be able to answer that for you. And the other answer to that would be that you need the order flow addition and higher to view nonlinear tick-based charts and second and millisecond-based charts. And the setting below that, the minimum bars setting, will preload all your charts uh, with these many bars. So by default, MotiveWave will load a smaller amount of chart data so that loading times are reduced. And as you scroll back in your chart, it will load the data as necessary. Uh, with this setting, you can preload any number of bars as soon as you open MotiveWave. Uh, be careful when using this setting though, it can lead to excessive load times. So the pop-up delay, this will be the delay for any chart pop-ups. For example, if you hover your cursor over a bar to see the OHLC values, um, you'll need to hover for two seconds before the pop-up shows, and disabling this option will disable those pop-ups. All right, so now let's move down to display bars. So display bars is a percentage of the chart that is taken up by bars or candlesticks. So in this case, 85% will be bars, and the remaining 15% will be blank space to the right side of the chart. And you could use this uh, blank space for something like a volume profile or your Elliott wave, uh, wave counts, anything you like. Okay, now let's jump over to the indicators tab. So indicators are just tags or values that we display on the chart price axis. So for example, last price here is the white the white tag indicator. So we can see for Amazon, we're at 3475-ish. Um, and if we want to enable a line for the last price, we can click the line button, click apply, and now we have a line. And if we want to edit the line type, colors, or anything like that, click the pencil icon there, and you can make any changes that you'd like. Okay, so let's move on to the time axis. So this can be used uh, just to show vertical lines at specific times on your chart. So you could show a line at uh, midnight, you know, start of RTH, et cetera. And you can also add a custom time of day option by clicking this enable button here. So you could add a vertical line at any, any time of day that you like. And on to the labels. So the labels are just text labels that you can display information on your chart. So you could add 52 week high, 52 week low. You could add, let's say an ask price. Click apply and then you can see we show the ask price as a text label in the chart. And if you want to modify that, you click the pencil icon. We could actually call this ask or we could move it into the top right corner and you can see it move there. And if you want to remove it, you click this little arrow here, apply, and now the label is gone. So templates, uh, let's actually create a quick template right now. So in order to create a template, we would just add some studies to our chart. So we could add, I don't know, let's say an alligator study, we could add a CCI, and then we click this button right here, 
and we can save this as a template. So it's going to save the CCI and alligator together. So we can just call this template and then click save as. And now if we wanted to add this template to another chart, we'd go over, select that chart, click our little template icon here and enable it there. It's just gonna say, would you like to override the studies on the chart? And we're gonna say yes. And that is how you create a template. We can right click it and delete it and we can remove these as well. So let's go back into the configure preferences templates option. And as you can see, um, you can set a default template here. So all you do is select use default option, and then you can select the desired template from the, from the list here. And just a quick note on templates, they do not automatically update. So if you make a change to a study within a template, uh, you will need to resave that template and then reapply it to all the desired charts. Another thing to note with templates is that they contain studies, but they do not necessarily contain all your chart settings. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's move over to some chart options now. So the use title analyses will default charts to use the untitled analyses. And this is something that we brought in in version six of MotiveWave. So it hasn't always been there. Show extended data will show the ETH session for all your charts. So for equities, this will be pre and post market trading. Snap, open and close. This will allow your tools uh, to snap not only to the high and low of bars, but also to the open and close of bars. The show crosshair will just show a crosshair on the selected chart. The global crosshair will show the crosshair on all your charts. And the double crosshair will snap to each bar. So we can go ahead and show that now it's enabled. So it's just going to want to snap to every bar when you move your cursor. It's not going to be able to go in between the bars. OK. And now we have, let's go down to the erase ruler. So this will erase the ruler tool uh, from the chart after each use. So if we disable this, it will actually keep the ruler tool on the chart as a component until it is deleted. So let's go ahead and try that now. So the ruler tool, or, excuse me, the ruler tool can be used to measure price moves, uh, degrees, percentages, and stuff like that. So now when we click it, it's gonna stay there on the chart. And then if we want it gone, we select it and we can delete it. The show bar size selector option down here will show this bar size selector at the bottom of all your charts. So you can enable or disable that here. The overlay volume, uh, we'll just show the volume as an overlay on your charts as shown right here. The auto move bar, so the auto move bar is used for lower bar size charts, uh, like second and millisecond charts. So this will move the chart forward in a streaming fashion, even if there are no trades. Normally a chart, if there are no trades will not update. So this just creates a smooth flowing chart for use with something like the order heat map study. The zoom bar size. So this will double the bar size if you try to shrink the chart below a bar width of one pixel. This essentially allows you to zoom out and see more data on your chart by automatically adjusting the bar size for you. So if we jump over to the bar sizes tab right here, uh, this is where you can select the bar sizes that are going to show up in the bar size drop down menu at the top toolbar. So right up top here. And just a note, you can only add linear bar sizes into this one. The bar size selector, as we just talked about, is at the bottom of your charts and you can add and remove bar sizes here and you can add nonlinear bar sizes to this menu. Uh, the next two tabs will allow you to display a watermark and copyright on your charts. And the last tab is components. So if we want to open a components panel as we just did, we can click this button right here to open the components panel. We can go to view components or select Alt-C is the keyboard shortcut on Windows. 
And you see from the components panel, we can add a custom length volume profile, a custom length TPO, a custom length VWAP line. We can add trend lines, labeled lines, resistance areas. Uh, you know, we have commentary markers, Fibonacci GAN, Elliott Wave, Elliott Wave markers, and harmonics. So the components and the sections will vary depending on the addition that you have. Uh, you can also create custom components from the configure preferences menu. So we can go back over to the components panel menu that we're in, and you're able to create a custom component and set the color and details as you like. Uh, and then also on the stencils tab right here, you can create your own section. So if you wanted to, you could give it a name and you could add all your uh, most frequently used items to this own section. So you don't have to, have to keep switching in between the different sections of the components panel. So along the same lines as custom components, you can also add custom tools to your toolbar. So this, could, this can be done by going to the toolbar menu up top here and then selecting custom tools. So let's actually go ahead and create a custom tool. So let's create some custom support and resistance areas. So if I wanna create a custom support component, I can name it support. I can pick the default tool. So I'm just gonna cl click support. And then I'm just gonna give an icon color of green. And then I can go ahead and go in and start customizing. So I'm gonna use this for the ES. So I'm gonna use a fixed height of, of 12. Uh, ticks, so that's going to be three points. I'm going to extend it to the right and the left. And then for the format, I'm going to make the line black, a thin black line, and the fill color, I'm going to go with green, but let's decrease the opacity. And then I also want it to underlay everything else. I want to underlay all the bars. So click OK, OK, and now we have one of our support areas created, our custom tool. And now we can create one called resistance. And it's just the same process. We can quickly go through this. Let's make it a bright red. Uh, we're gonna keep it 12 ticks, extend left, extend right. And we're gonna underlay that. And we're gonna change the color. We don't want it to be 100% opacity. We want it 20%. Okay, okay. So now we have a, a couple of custom tools we created. And now we can actually add these to our toolbars, which is pretty handy. So let's go over to the toolbar and we're gonna add it to our top toolbar. So we select that one. And then we go try to find the custom tools we just created. So one was called support. We're gonna add that one. And the other one was resistance. So we're gonna add that one. And we don't want it to be behind the preferences. So we're just gonna move it up. And maybe we'll put it right here. And click okay. And now you can see we have our custom support and resistance areas here. And if we wanted to, we can just click the support area throw it on the chart, click it again, and add our custom support and resistance areas really quickly uh, without much thought. So that is how you add custom support and resistance area tools. So let's actually take a look at uh, the title analysis and visibility settings. So these are gonna tie into the support and resistance area tools we just created. So let's say we regularly draw support and resistance zones on our chart, just like this, but you don't want to duplicate them. It doesn't make sense to draw them on your one hour chart and then not have them show up on your three minute chart. Um, so what we can do is actually create a title analysis uh, and use the title analysis on both charts. And then if we want different studies, on both those charts, we can use visibility settings to hide those studies. So let's go ahead and create a title analysis for this. So what we do is click this folder icon here and then click new analysis. 
We're going to call this one ES, and it's going to be based on an empty chart. We're going to click OK, and it's just going to load up a blank ES chart for us. So what we're going to do is close that untitled analysis chart that we had going. And we can set this to, uh, we could set it to one hour if we wanted. We're going to show extended data. And then what we want to do now is load this same title analysis on this chart as well. So we're going to select this chart and then select that same yes title analysis that we just created. And what I'm doing right here is just uh, closing the untitled analysis because we no longer need it. We're going to set this down to our three minute chart and show extended data. So now if we add a support zone, so we can start adding support zones on our one hour chart. Let's add something a little closer up here. We can see that they now appear on our three minute chart as well. And we can adjust them on one, we can adjust them on this one and it adjusts on the other. So we could do that. We could add a resistance up here and perfect. Now let's say that we actually wanted to add studies to this three minute chart. Well, if we did that, they would normally add themselves to the one hour chart as well because it's on the same title analysis. But if we use visibility, we can hide it from the one hour chart. So let's go ahead and let's add a volume imprint to the three minute chart. Let's add a bid ask. So let's do a footprint chart, do 50 of them. And the key thing here is going over to the options tab and selecting the visibility. So instead of all, we want to select equals three minutes, create. And now it's just loading the tick data. So now we can see that volume imprint is showing on our three minute chart, but not our one hour chart. And if we wanted to add, say, a TPO study to our one hour chart, we could do the same thing. We could quickly make a few setting changes, go over to visibility and set it to equal one hour. And now we can see the TPO on the one hour, but not the three minute. So that's how you use title analyses and visibility settings to display your support and resistance areas on multiple charts of the same instrument. So, while we're here working on the volume imprint study, uh, we can actually talk about chart scaling and spacing. This is quite important for volume imprint, uh, order heat map and TPO studies, as it allows you to set a chart view so you're able to read numbers on the chart. This is something auto scale might not show depending on the range of the chart. With auto scale, you can see it's turned on right here as it's depressed. Um, by default, MotorWave will open a chart with auto scale enabled. This means that as we scroll back and forward, um, it's just gonna keep all price bars within view no matter what the price range is. And we may not be able to read these numbers here. So if we wanna turn auto scale off, we click the auto scale button. And now that puts us in price range scaling. So this scaling method is best for volume imprint, order heat map and TPO studies, because now we can set our vertical chart range in ticks and it will keep this range even if chart bars exceed the range. So we're now able to move this chart around. And as we can see, if we go into the chart settings, uh, we have a price range in ticks of 74. So we could knock this down to 50 ticks and we should be able to see uh, all the numbers that we need to see. Uh, one thing that you're probably noticing is the spacing of the, the, the chart here, how the, the uh, volume imprints are all overlapping. And if we wanna change that, you can either change it from the bar width right here, the pixels. So increasing this will increase the width of each bar and space them out more evenly. You can also just click and drag on the time axis and this will increase the bar width like so. And if we wanted, we could also remove the bars from the background as they could be a little distracting for us. So that the volume imprint study looks a little better now. 
Um, and when we use price range scaling, we're able to read all the numbers. If we move over to the TPO study here, um, we can see that it's overlapping here. So one setting that I didn't set that I should have was constrain width. So when I select that and apply, what it's gonna do is gonna stop the overlap on the TPO study. And we may also want to see the letters as well. So we click update and you'll notice no letters are actually showing. Uh, that is because the chart scale is an auto scale and there's a large range in ticks here. So what we can do is disable auto scale if we'd like, and then we could set our price range in ticks to whatever we want. Um, so we can enter them manually there. We can also click and drag right here, see the double arrow uh, on the price axis. We can click and drag here to resize uh, to a point where the letters are actually able to display. So we could do something like that and we could see them. Another trick you could do is instead of displaying a letter uh, for every tick interval, you could do it for every point. So every four ticks, you could do that. And then that's a little easier to read. Okay, so that covers chart scaling and spacing for now. So let's uh, actually quickly touch on replay mode. So you can show replay mode by clicking on this button here at the top. You can also go to view replay mode. And just a quick tip, replay mode will replay all the charts on the selected page. So this page is my eMini S&P 500 page. If I had a bunch of other chart tabs up here with different instruments, it's gonna replay all of those at the same time. So you're really gonna to have to be aware of that. It might be better to run replay mode on a page with just the instrument you're looking to replay, or you could pop out the chart onto a new page like this, and then click the replay uh, mode from here. So you're only replaying this one chart. Okay, so in order to access the settings, we have to click this little gear icon in the bottom right corner right here. So this will be your first step in setting everything up. So the first setting is source data. Uh, source data can be bar data, which will replay the open, high, low, close of that specific bar size. So we have a one hour chart selected there. So what it will do is it'll replay the open, high, low, close of that one hour bar. If we use minute data, uh, minute data will use one minute, if available, uh, to replay each open, high, low, close uh, from those one minute bars within the bar size that you're replaying. So it's going to try to take minute bars and use that for, you know, your one hour chart or your three minute chart. So you get uh, a little more uh, ticks, I guess you could say, in replay mode. And then tick data. Uh, we'll use tick data to replay. So this will be the most accurate replay data, but it will have considerable load time compared to the others. The generate ticks uh, will insert fake trades between the open, high, low, and close to simulate a trading environment. And this is not available when using tick data, just bar data and minute data. Step until price change. Uh, so this will keep uh, playing ticks until the price changes when pressing the play button. So this will happen instead of a single tick at a time. Real delay will simulate the delay between ticks by using the tick timestamps. So use this if you'd like to simulate the actual playback of ticks in real time. Uh, speed factor applies to the real delay option only. Uh, so it allows you to speed up or slow down the playback of ticks in real time. The tick delay is the delay to add between the play of each tick and the bar delay is the delay uh, to wait between the playback of each bar. So this essentially will adding a higher number here will slow down your replay under bar data or minute data. And then we see on the right, we have a replay account here. So when you have replay mode activated, it's gonna create this temporary replay account where it will store all your trades and anything like that. And just, just to note that when you deactivate replay mode, it's gonna terminate and remove this replay account. So you're not gonna be able to see the trades. So just 
keep replay mode enabled if you want to go back and into your account settings and look at any of your trades. So after we have that set up right there, we can click OK. And the next step would be to select your start date and time. So you could select you know, November 1st at 9.30 AM. And then in order to activate replay mode, you, you press this little power button here, and it's going to turn green. And then it's going to load us up to the start date and time. So this first button, so this will restart replay mode back to your initial start date and time. The play button is a step to next tick. So it's just going to play the next tick. This button here will step to the next bar. So it'll play through the ticks, uh, the open, high, low, close until the next bar. And this next button here it would be considered more of like the play button. So this will step through all the ticks. So if we select this here, you can see it's just going to automatically play through everything. Um, as you can see, I'm not using tick data, so it's not going to be accurate for the volume imprint study. Um, one thing to note with replay mode is that when the power button is green and it's activated, uh, you cannot edit some of your settings. So for example, you cannot open up your settings and go change the source data. If you wanted to change the source data, you're going to need to deactivate replay mode, go back into your preferences, change the source data, and then reactivate replay mode. So one last tip I have is in configure preferences. If we go to the keyboard shortcuts, um, take a look at all these keyboard shortcuts and assign a shortcut to commonly used items. And the same tip also applies to the toolbar menu. So go into your toolbars. You can add multiple toolbars, uh, left, right, bottom, and two at the top if you want. And consider adding your commonly used items to the toolbar to make your trading easier and more efficient. So that concludes the presentation. Uh, Joe, do we have any questions? Yes, Jason, we do. Okay. Um, let's start from the top here. Question from Alex. How may I access the, the console from the main menu on a completely detached full screen chart? So if you are on any other window, window uh, sorry, any other chart or window for that matter, um, and you would like to access the console, there is a window menu at the top. And if you select window, it will list all your open windows. So if you just select a console as shown there by Jason, that will bring up um, your console. Okay, Alex. Uh, next question, Herman, is it possible to have uh, individual time scale charts. I use 12 minute charts. Uh, you can uh, create custom time frames within Motive Wave. Yep. And the way you can do that, um, yep. did you want to show them, Jason? Or Yeah, let me just what? jump over. Yep. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm just going to close that. Oh. Let's go over to charts. Yeah, something funny is happening here. I don't know if it's a replay mode or what. Let me quickly restart, maybe answer another question there, Joe, if you want. Yep. We have a question uh, from Ari. What is the bar on the bottom right? And does the block increase as memory is consumed? Is this a problem when it's almost green in color? Okay, I guess you would be referring to the bar in the bottom right-hand corner, which starts off green and it goes to different colors from green all the way to red. Uh, when it's green, it basically is uh, stating that there's enough memory. That's actually the heap size. And as more and more of the heap size is used, if it starts reaching um, critical points, then it'll start to change color. If you start seeing it yellow, you know, maybe getting to a bit of an orange or, or a red, you can always click on the little garbage can icon to the right of it. And what that will do is uh, force what's called garbage collection and then um, bring the heap, uh, make more available uh, make more memory available to the heap, bring but, it back down to green. Yeah. And this is done. That is done automatically in the background. So you wouldn't normally ever need to do that. The only Correct. time to be concerned is if this ever turns yellow or red. 
that's when you really need to be concerned. Um, and Joe, just to jump back to Herman's question. Yes. Uh, is it possible to have individual time scale charts? So you can, you can double click your chart background to bring up the chart settings. Uh, on the bar settings tab, you can, excuse me, you can change the interval down to 12 minutes if you want to. Um, you can also add a custom bar size down here and up top, you could add one up here. And then I think the other question was, can I zoom the charts with the mouse wheel? So yes, you can. And that is found in, uh, where is that again, Joe? <laughs> Uh, can't sorry, sorry. Oh, for the uh, for the mouse. Configure yeah. Configure preferences. Yeah. Hang on, let me bring it up here. Configure preferences, and then it's under general, then mouse. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So yeah. So by default, you can use the um, if you hold down the Alt key, and you use your scroll button on the mouse, uh, you'll end up expanding the chart, which in effect is you're actually zooming the chart. Yeah, so you could change the wheel action from time shift to bar width if you like, and then it's going to do that for you with the mouse scroll. And then Herman came in with another question. So can I add a bar size 12 minutes? Uh, yes, you can. So we'll just go over to the bar size selector here. If we want to put it in down here, we could add a linear bar of 12 minutes, click apply, and then we have one there. If we want it up here in this top bar size menu, we can go ahead and add 12 there, click OK, and then you can see 12 minutes is shown there. So that's not a problem. OK, uh, Mohammed would like to know how to set a Renko chart. Right, so for a Renko, let's actually jump over to the E-mini S&P. And let's get rid of some of this stuff. Go to auto scale. Uh, so one, there's a quick menu. You can right click your chart and then you can find uh, preset Renko intervals. You can't change these at this moment, but you could select uh, a preset Renko interval or you could also go back into your chart settings on the bar settings tab, select Renko, and then you can set your own custom interval. So you could do you know, something like six ticks, and then you'd have your Renko chart there. Okay. Um, we have a question here. Can I bring my indicators from one chart to another chart with a template as a default? Uh, can I bring my indicators from one chart to another chart with template as default? Yeah. So I think I, uh, I'm not sure if he's asking each chart he opens, um, it can load that template because we can do that. In configure preferences, chart templates, you can create a chart template, select use default, and then select the template option here. And now every new chart that you open is going to automatically load this template. Or as shown in my example, you can create a template and then just add it manually this way. Uh, next question, Joe. What is study bar updates? What is study? Oh, for studies. Okay, so let's yeah, go open studies, up yeah. a study. Uh, what's going to have that? CCI. Bar yeah, updates. Right so uh, by default, on, on some studies, MotiveWave will update the study values um, at the open or the close of the bar. Uh, so what bar updates does uh, is it'll update the study values after each incoming tick. So every time there's a new price change, it's gonna update that study for you. And the reason that is disabled on some studies by default is because it can, it can cause a lot of CPU issues depending on the study it may overwork your CPU if you have, you know, a ton of charts using, using the bar updates. Okay. Can the system find support and resistance levels automatically? Uh, we, do we do have, have we do have yeah. a study called 
support and resistance. Um, I just trying to think personally myself, I would prefer to do them manually, but we do have a study called support and resistance. As you can see, it kind of draws its own. Yeah, and then we also have our Java SDK, so you're free to modify that code if you have your own specific set of criteria on how to determine support and resistance, and then uh, implement your own custom study for that. Um, how can I change my data provider? Is it possible without deleting the profile? Yeah, so uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, the, the best method to do that, and I assume by profile, you mean your workspace. The best method to switch your data provider is to create a workspace backup. So take your current uh, workspace, go to file backup, and it's gonna create a zip file. And then what you wanna do is create a brand new workspace and connect it to your new data connection. And then open up that blank workspace, go back to the file menu and click restore. And then just click that uh, or select that backup file that you created and restore. And what this does and why we do it this way is MotiveWave is then going to automatically try to map over the symbols from your first connection to your second connection. And that's that'll give you your best success uh, versus just trying to add that connection to the existing workspace. OK, I guess we have time for what, two more? Yeah, we have more. some more time here. Okay. Um, how can you set the size of the bottom window? For example, the RSI study or MACD, the automatic size is uh, always too small. Can this be set to a preferred size? Uh, so we have, what do we have now? It's probably a configure preferences under uh, chart options, I think, is it? Or study right height there. pixels right here. Right there, yeah, that'd be it. So you could set this to a larger number and that'll automatically create. When you, you can readjust the study heights, uh, it should hold that study height for you though, after you adjust it. But yeah, you can change that setting here. Okay. Um, is there any plans to implement volume candle bars for time charts? And with this proportion. Oh, so that is like an equi volume, I believe they call that. Yeah, that that is on our list. Um, that would be a very good one to add. Uh, we've had a few people ask for that one, and I would say there's you know there's a good chance we're going to look into that one for sure. Okay. Um, how do I reset Motive Wave to the defaults? In other words, I guess uh, what they're saying, they call it factory default here, but I guess what they're asking is um, the original setup with an install, with a clean install. Um, so the only way I know of would just be to create a new workspace. Yeah, and then also depends to what you want for defaults. Let's say um, you, have, you change all your layouts, your chart layouts, and um, we have a bunch of studies on charts. You can always go under configure layout and then reset layout as well. Uh, okay. How can I, can I change the workspace without shutting down mode of wave? Uh, make changes to workspace. You can go into no. configure, or, no, sorry. No, sorry. Can they change the workspace without shutting down mode of wave? And that would the answer to that would be no. You would have to shut down if you want to change your current workspace. Oh, I see. Yeah, you would have to shut down, restart Motive Wave, and then select the workspace from the drop down list. Yeah, and you can open multiple instances of Motive Wave, so you could have two workspaces running at the same time if you wanted to. Correct. Um, maybe we'll take care of two more, or maybe. Yeah, sorties, we just um, answered that one. Thank you for the question. Um, is there going to be a Black Friday sale? Uh, yes, there will be. Stay tuned for that. I think it will be an announcement um, shortly. 
or you can always contact sales at motorwave.com directly. I see one from Scott. Is there a way to turn off the auto backup each time Motorwave is shut down? Yes, there is. Uh, you can go to configure preferences, general backup, and then deselect auto backup enabled. I highly advise you don't do that. <laughs> um, these backups can can save your butt sometimes. It's just nice to have if something goes wrong. Um, unless for some reason your auto backups are massive in file size, which they shouldn't be. It's best to leave those on. But yeah, if you want to shut them off, you can shut them off here. Um, maybe one more. Sorry, guys, I'm just scanning them here. Do you have plans for real-time scanning um, in the future? Um, well, the only real-time scanning we currently have would be the custom columns. So you can create a custom watch list column. And it it is sort of like real-time scanning. Um, you create a custom, uh, excuse me, a custom column, and then you can have it light up a certain color if a, if a condition is met. That is sort of like real-time scanning. But yeah, we do we do have plans to make our scanner a little better, and that that may include real-time scanning. I'm not sure. Uh, other people have asked for scanning, you know, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, so we'll see. That is that is in the future plans though. Okay, and one final one here from Daniel. Is it possible to execute SD code from the trade panel buttons? Um, so with our Java SDK, the two main purposes of that is either to create a custom study or a custom strategy and a study would um, obviously be placed on a chart and a strategy in order to execute the strategy that would be placed on a chart. Um, now that, that would not be from the trade panel though. So to answer your question, it would be no. Um, any uh, SDK code would have to be in the form of a study or strategy. Okay. I see one from down here. It says, do you have the display pulling and stacking? The bid and ask, and I assume you're referring to the DOM. Um, and I am on IQ feed, so I do not have much of a DOM. Oh, there we go. So the pulling and stacking are going to be the ask delta and the bid delta. And we do have plans to improve this right now. Uh, What's, what it's doing is, is resetting after every bid and ask change. And a lot of you has, have asked for this to be reset on a timer instead. So I believe that will be coming in the future where you'll be able to you know, reset the pulling and stacking based on time instead of resetting each bid and ask change. So good question. And then another one, are you guys going to do a webinar for, for footprint setups? Yeah, uh, we will be. There will be something in the future. We also have um, ones previously done. So if you go to our video tutorials. Um, and we have ones right here. So this is maximizing order flow tools. And then we've also done one. Uh, for futures.io and those may be of interest to you. It kind of goes into setting up the volume imprint study, uh, the TPO study and stuff like that. So you may get your questions answered by looking at these two webinars here. Well, I'm just looking here. Shankar wants to know why um, Renko charts may take uh, some time to load. Can you tell me? Oh, uh, crypto. So Renko 
will try to use uh, tick data if it can, because in order to create a proper Ranko chart, you should be using tick data because that's how you actually create a real Ranko chart. And so I'm guessing it's using tick data uh, to create those. So it's trying to download it and it's taking forever. Um, now, if you don't want to use tick data, you can go into your bar settings and select used historical minute bars. So this is gonna use minute bars to create those Ranko charts instead of the tick data. Uh, where are we at, Joe? We have one here. Is there a conversion tool to take code from another platform and convert it to Motive Wave? Um, no, there isn't. Um, there's just too many different um, languages. languages out there, languages <laughs> yeah. and scripts, and so you would have to um, basically just go up the, uh, out of uh, look at take a look at our Java SDK and then map the according functionality to do what um, it is that you want your study to do. And another question, does MotiveWave have an indicator builder tool? Not, not in that sense, not like an easy builder tool. Um, what, what are the other platforms like PineScript, stuff like that? No, we don't, we don't have any easy builder. Uh, will this webinar recording be available? Yes, uh, this, this is being recorded and it will be posted uh, to our video library section. So you go to help and video tutorials. So that should be posted on our website at some, at some point. So uh, we have another one coming in. What does use real values mean in studies? Okay, so real values. So the use real values on the options tab uh, can be used in specific situations where the bar size doesn't use the real open, high, low, close values for a normal linear bar. So for example, if you're using a Ranko chart, it won't print the true high and low values for that time period. So something like a moving average set to use high or low um, uh, would use the Ranko high or low instead of the true high or low values. So enabling this option will use the true high or low instead of the actual bar high or low. So this isn't something that you'd use normally. You wouldn't normally need to enable that. Are you planning to have build in pattern formations in the future updates like candlesticks, double bottoms, et cetera? Um, we do, there is a third party, tradingindicators.com, that has a um, study that you can purchase that has some candle patterns, and that will work with Motive Wave. Um, there is some feature requests for other patterns, and that is something that um, we may, may take a look at uh, in the future. Um, so that one's done. Shortcut to a horizontal line. Um, uh, would that be shortcut up here on your toolbar? So you could add a horizontal line here, call it line, oops. And then we could add this to our top toolbar. Oh man, there's too many called line. Click okay, and then we'd have the horizontal line tool there. How are we looking, Joe? I think, uh, I think we're done for now, we're okay. Um, for those of you who had more technical support related questions, please send them to, tech, uh, to support at motorway.com. If there's anything that you have in regards to sales related questions, please email sales, sales at motorway.com. And uh, thanks for coming out, taking the time out of your busy schedule today. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks for showing up. We'll talk to you later. Have a great evening.